Live from White House Lanes, it's Bowling with Biden. It's go time. This man's going to win a lot of political offices. Now, here's your Bowling with Biden host, Mark Thompson. There is new polling out. And all of you little Biden heads out there, everybody wearing a Joe Biden button or you've got your lawn sign lawn sign that says Biden or bust, you will like it. I don't see it here in this. Um, no, I had it here, Albert. Well, let me just tell you. you. Wanna, okay. No, no. Let me just tell you. Mm-hmm. It's a Washington Post ABC News poll. And they have the race tied. What? At 46. It's a dead heat. Now, admittedly, it's all about the swing states. That's, mm-hmm. you know, see my earlier comments about the um, ridiculous electoral college. But it is quite notable that for all the talk that Biden should withdraw and get off the ticket, this is some good news for Biden as he faces uh, more scrutiny. 46 to 46. And both surveys at the national level and in key battleground states make it it all within the margin of error. These are the same polls, I should say, that uh, note that um, Biden, two-thirds of Americans, including 56% of Democrats, want him out of the race. <laughs> so these, you know, two things can be true at the same time, I guess. Well, let me add this in, because while the polling might be neck and neck, about $90 million in contributions to a super PAC supporting President Biden's campaign is now being held back by Democratic donors. That's important money. He needs that money. This, according to the New York Times, they say the group of donors told the super PAC future forward they won't provide the funds if President Biden stays in the race. So Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's extraordinary. This from the LA Times, Biden's shaky performance raised concerns about whether he can win in November and prompted calls from prominent Democrats, colonists, and others for him to step aside. It's up to the Democratic Party to sort this out, says the LA Times. But it's time to refocus on the only candidate in the race who is patently unfit for office any office, and an imminent threat to democracy, Donald Trump. It's unbelievable that the nation is spending so much time on the question of Biden's verbal acuity when the greatest concern ought to be that his challenger is a self-aggrandizing felon and twice-impeached election denier. Trump fomented the January 6th insurrection, shows contempt for the rule of law, shamelessly lies in pursuit of more power, He's an authoritarian who admires murderous despots, wants to jail his political enemies and his public, and has publicly flirted with declaring himself a dictator on the first day in office. Mm -hmm. With fervent support from the Republican Party, he peddles cruelty, racism, and misogyny, demonizing immigrants as poisoning the blood of our country, demeaning women's looks and intelligence, and using disgustingly fascist language to criticize his opponents as vermin. He's a man who lied about his wealth for years to cheat on his taxes, whose business was convicted of criminal tax fraud, and who has been denounced by many former aides and cabinet members as a malignant narcissist who recklessly puts himself before the American people. That's just the first two paragraphs. (laughs) And it goes on. (laughs) The LA Times reminds us of the fact that Democrats are chasing their tail when they ought to be chasing Trump. The last paragraph of the LA Times op-ed is, leaders of the Democratic Party have to stop the self-defeating discussion about Biden's fitness and decide whether to replace him or unify behind him. And Americans must start hearing more about how the record, um, about how the records, positions, and character of Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris and any of the prominent Democrats being floated as possible replacements make them all unquestionably superior to Trump. So it's sort of like do it or don't, but all this obsession is not helping. 
I think my bottom line is let Biden win us the election first and then call for him to step down and give it to Kamala Harris for the second term. So still alive. Yeah, uh, I big shout out. Uh, I get that. And I also get sort of the 3D chess of that. Like, let's win this and then we can replace the head coach after we win the Super Bowl. So uh, I get that. Um, that was the L.A. Times in answer to your question, Paul. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a New York Times piece, which is damning as well. I mean, it kind of hits the same thing. They finally go after Donald Trump. They, they say he is dangerous in word, deed, and action. He puts self over country. He loathes the laws we live by. Donald Trump is unfit to lead. Next week, for the third time in eight years, Donald Trump will be nominated as the Republican Party's candidate for president of the United States. A once great political party now serves the interests of one man. Wow. A man as demonstrably unsuited for the office of president as any to run in the long history of the republic. A man whose values, temperament, ideas, and language are directly opposed to so much of what has made this country great. That's their opening paragraph, the New York Times. Mm. It is a chilling choice against this national moment. For more than two decades, large majorities of Americans have said they are dissatisfied with the direction of the country. And the post-COVID era of stubborn inflation, high interest rates, social division, and political stagnation has left many voters even more frustrated and despondent. The Republican Party once pursued electoral power in service to solutions for such problems, to building, quote, the shining city on a hill, as Ronald Reagan liked to say. Its vision of the United States, embodied in principled public servants like George Bush, John McCain, and Mitt Romney, was rooted in the values of freedom, sacrifice, individual responsibility, and the common good. And they go on. Mr. Uh, Trump, the party's conception of those values, Republicans set aside their concerns about Mr. Trump because of his positions on immigration, trade, and taxes. But the stakes of this election are not fundamentally about policy disagreements. The stakes are more foundational. What qualities matter most in America's president and commander-in-chief? Mr. Trump has shown a character unworthy of the responsibilities of the presidency. He has demonstrated an utter lack of respect for the Constitution, the rule of law, and the American people. Instead of a cogent vision for the country's future, Mr. Trump is animated by a thirst for political power to use the levers of government to advance his interests, satisfy his impulses, and exact retribution against those who he thinks have wronged him. He is quite simply unfit to lead. They go on. They go on. But it's again now another reminder. By the way, do the swing state voters, the people who are going to decide this election, read the New York Times op-ed or the LA Times op-ed? You could stop 100 on the street, and I'm guessing the answer is maybe two or three have. I mean, it's not, you know. But I think it does inform a lot of the conversation particularly within the Beltway. And so it helps set an agenda on some level. Mm. But um, I I think it's worth noting. Uh, first of all, that's very well put, and those are two high-profile editorial boards, and they're basically saying, guys, you're, you know, you're cutting your own throat, essentially, with a, and, and the throats of all of us in, uh, in uh, America with an election of Donald Trump. Uh, that is your Bowling with Biden. That's all for this edition. There's your new leader. But join us again next time for Bowling with Biden. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.